Welcome to La Casa Eden, the Eden Mansion, stately Eden Mansion. And I'm Dawn Eden, and you are watching Video Wave. That is the show. This is the first rock and roll record I ever heard, believe it or not, Snoopy and his friends, the Royal Guardsmen. And next up, we'll have a video by Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds. And after that, you're going to see me doing a remarkably good interview with Alice Dona. Hi, I'm Dawn Eden here with you for Video Wave. Uh, today's Times is a headline, Clinton seeking 31 billion in stimulus. Well, I say he should just seek 1498 and buy the new CD by uh, Alice Donut, which is called, I have to read this, The Untidy Suicides of Your Degenerate Children. Uh, I'm, I'm here with Steve and Tom of Alice Donut. Um, so am, am I the only person who has Trouble remembering that title. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I was always the last person called upon for teams in school. It's just been my lot. So, so um, did you give it that title just as a sort of spit in the face of the PMRC, who will probably take it seriously? <laughs> um. Well, not just that. It was, it was just like a debate on a just like adding to the national debate on family values. <laughs> well, it seems like a tongue-in-cheek attitude has uh, pervaded your music all since the beginning of your career. Um, now, I I know that um, that you were formed about like six years ago. Um, but tell me, like, were you in any groups that made records before then? Not me. Um, uh, yeah, I I was some somewhat in a band. I recorded a record with a guy named Gary Window, who, um, let me see, that was on Island Records 10 years ago. Oh, right. was it under the name Gary Window? Yeah. Straight to the cutout things. Straight to the cutout things. <laughs> um, uh, and Tilly's, actually. And, um, and I recorded a single with a band called um, uh, Public Servants, which Public? later went on to become a jet or uh, nothing. Mm -hmm. So that's so that's one for those of you who are checking out the three for a dollar bin at Bleaker Bob's of new wave power pop singles. Yeah, right? yeah, you'll find it. You'll find it there. Um, and you do some trombone on that too. Some. Yeah, now this. Yeah, now, now this is interesting because um, that's not an instrument used much in, in rock, but you use it on um, your latest record too, don't you? A little bit. Yeah, bone chord. Bone chord. Um. What kind of reaction do you get from audiences live when you use it? Do, do they uh, dig it? They dig it a lot. Most of these kids have never seen trombones before, out of the context of, say, marching band. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's, um, it gets a good response. They like it. It's cool. It's almost like a consciousness raising type thing. I'd say so, yeah. It's educational. <laughs> it's not education. <laughs> Because the, the other the other article on the front page of today's Times is uh, is, is about the arts uh, losing their funding in public schools. So here you're helping these kids who have been deprived of you know arts funding. That's yeah. right. <laughs> okay, now I have a question that comes to courtesy of Toonsmith magazine. I got this in the mail. It says, "Dear songwriter, are your songs as good as the ones you hear on the radio?" No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I threw out what was inside. It was a subscription uh, thing to tunes me. Well, no, of course not. <laughs> well, to me, it's like apples and oranges. Because your yeah, song. Yeah, fruit. That's true. Like, <laughs> I like that. And, uh... They both grow on trees. No, I'm, so, I'm sorry. No, ser seriously, it's like it's yeah. like um, it, your your music is still even with the grunge, you know, and the rise of alternative sounds, you're still not exactly trend followers, you're like in your own niche. Yeah, we just, um, we just do what uh, comes naturally. I mean, that's, uh, you know, it's like, you know, we, we don't follow trends. Because even if we tried, it wouldn't, it wouldn't really work, you know, just whatever we come up with, we put out without a, 
crazy. Much thought. Yeah. Now, now having said that, yeah. because a lot of people out in TV land are going to think that that's the biggest rock and roll cliche we've ever they've ever heard. We don't follow trends, you know. Hey, that's straight out of Spinal Tap. Tell me, what is just so people will realize you're telling them the, the truth and that you're not like slanted or biased. What is the trendiest thing you've ever done? If you can say you've done something that's really trendy. I got Doc Martens, but I got them second hand. <laughs> Perfect. And on that note, uh, we have for you uh, one of the videos from uh, Alice Stone at some the most recent album. Um, no. Oh, it's not? It's not? A, it, no, it's off our... The one before that? It's off... Mrs. Hayes is on this... Mule. Mule? It's like on our third album. Oh, no, okay. No, it's on the second album. So we have a hopelessly oh, outdated video oh, for you. No, just kidding, just kidding. It's, it's really cool, Mule. and it's called third third Mrs. Album. Hayes by Alice Donut. Turn it up. Mrs. Hayes by Alice Donut, who I'm here with right now, and, and my name is Dawn. Hey, Eden. Okay, and, and this is Tom. Tom, Tom yeah. no, no. Uh, so, okay, so tell me about Chet. You can see what a versatile uh, actor he is. <laughs> and, uh, here he's flying. Here he's flying, which uh, we've seen him do several times. And in the video that you just saw, you get to see like a full range of Chet. You know, this, you you laugh, you cry, you. How did you discover this, um... Tremble, sexual frenzy. Yeah, how did you discover this guy with a little flower petal around his nipple? Um, I don't know, there's been a cult of Chet for, for uh, I don't know. At first I thought you were talking years about, here. like, Chet Atkins, and I was like, wow, I didn't know these guys were into country. No, this is a Chet Mazer. The Chet Mazer. Chet Mazer, he's not like the son of the Mazers who ran that nightclub in Long Island where no. Billy Joel used to. He's the son of the famous bowling bowler from yeah. oh. Chet Mazer Jr. Yeah. He's the junior from the, yeah. you've probably heard of him. Yeah. Uh, Any bowler knows. Uh, yeah. now, now, now I have yet another brilliant question for Steve, which is how do you play trombone and drums at the same time, or do you? The only time I do it at the same time is alone in my house. <laughs> Otherwise, Tom, when we do when we do drumming stuff on the uh, we do trombone on the stage, generally Tom is playing drums. And, uh, oh, I see. And how well does he play drums? Very well. He's Cuban. It's natural. He's not so learned. Except my foot. Oh, you mean like uh, Cubans have have rhythm? It's in the blood. Hey. Maybe. <laughs> the, uh, and and the way that like my people are supposed to feel naturally guilty about everything. <laughs> There's something like. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hey, I feel guilty. No. Hey, life should be life should be like love and, and beautiful here. How about that? That's right. Yeah. Okay. So, um, alternative tentacles. When you still is that still like a sort of Apple Records of the '90s as far as a very artist oriented label? That's what I've heard. Well, um, they're really cool, and, and the artists get to do whatever they want, you know, and they just pick bands that don't sound the same to each other as well. Is that why you stayed on the label so long? Because, I mean, I'd be pretty surprised if you hadn't gotten offers from other uh, labels. Well, it's, that's like the biggest thing is that there's complete control of everything. And, and also we really like the people there, you know, and they um, support us and, uh, you know, care about us, not just as, you know, as friends as well as just a, a music thing. That's important. Um, is JLB Opera like very much like involved in the day-to-day -day operations of the label? No, no. Biafra like um, doesn't doesn't do, he does more just picking bands and mm -hmm. you know and so, like everybody at AT is like really opinionated. So like you know they'll call you up and say like, mm -hmm. your third song sucks. You know <laughs> this song is great, but that's like that. But they but it's good because at least you know they're being yeah. honest with you. Yeah, they're totally. Of, like, and then they call back next week and say, that third song, it's great. The song you hired that, that was great, sucks. Yeah. <laughs> you know, oh, so, so that's not quite so good. Fickle. That's good, it's good. It's okay. If you make you leave, you make you Because they can say what they want, and we can deal with it how we want. And yeah, and, and it, 
And bottom line is like, even if they hate something you do, you put it out because it's like your decision. That's that's good. That's that's yeah. the most important thing. But that, that uh, the artist should have control. Um, yeah. So t tell tell me as as we wrap up here, um, what can audiences uh, look for from from you during the uh, rest of '93? In terms of like Definitely. tours, records, that sort of thing. We're gonna do a U.S. tour now, so it'll be coast to coast. Three months. Yeah. Great. So it's like three months of uh, that. And after that, we're just gonna start writing again. We've just been touring. We just did four months in Europe. Wow. And before that, we did like a four months in the States. So we've been touring like animals. And after that. Touring like animals. I'm just picturing animals yeah. touring, you know, rabbits and cats going to London and Paris. Oh, the smell. <laughs> Great. Well, I'd like to thank you both very much for uh, inviting us up into your manager's apartment here. Um, I, I, I've been talking to to Tom and Steve of Alistona, and this is Don Eden for Video Wave. <laughs>